<laughs> Make sure your volume's on. No pictures, though. Do you have a video? Did you get it? Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. I would have a birthday balloon in the back, but my um, dog popped it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been doing today for your birthday? Uh, there was an unexpected parade outside the house. <laughs> Of oh, people yeah, from my, great. from uh, from people uh, by people from my dad's job. So that so that scared me. <laughs> and then who so that's fabulous. This, um, this will be a birthday you'll remember forever. Yes. Because this is a nasty. once in a lifetime thing for all of us. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Did you tell me so, you got to talk to? Um, I also got to talk to uh, uh, Bill MacArthur. Uh, I also got to talk to Bill MacArthur. Astronaut. Is he an astronaut? Oh, good. Excellent. It's most excellent. Did you enjoy yeah. that? So I mean, was he in, was he just back or what did he share with you? Um, he was. I was just asking a couple questions like uh like like how like how do you eat on the space shuttle? Uh, it was was it hard to control stuff like that? Wonderful. And so you're gonna try that at home jump up and down and try to eat while you're coming back to her. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Ask them where they all live. No jumping on the trampoline trying to eat that way. <laughs> well, cool. So, did, did Ben bring you the surprise? The, all the NASA stuff. Oh, yes, he did. Did all you go through everything? Yes, it's actually where <laughs> NASA stuff. Yay. Oh, Excellent. good. Yay. Sorry, I didn't, I, I couldn't have a printer, so I couldn't make you a badge. It's okay. So, but you can use it whenever. I did get a pen, though. Oh, good. And um, did you see the 3D glasses in there? Yes, that I you did. Done with the posters? Yes. That um, Earth poster is phenomenal. Um, yes. You can actually see spreading centers and all sorts of things in, in the, using the 3D glasses. <laughs> is your mom That's trying good. it right now? No. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, we actually put it all up, and I have not seen that yet. So it's something that oh, okay. we get to do in a bit. Well, good. You can play later. Yay. Surprises will keep coming today. Yes. Yay. <laughs> yes. So um, I'm a planetary geologist, and I focus mostly on the moon and Mars. And I look at volcanoes and craters and all sorts of that cool stuff. And I work with teams to explore the moon and Mars. And um, we're talking about how do we live on the moon? How do we go back to the moon? And my colleague, um, we'll do the we'll go this way, the Brady Bunch thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an astrophysicist, and I study gamma ray bursts, which are the most violent explosions in the universe. Yes, I've heard of those. And they are worse than uh, uh, they are worse than the death of a star. Yeah, it's it, yeah, it's the death of a star, except it's beamed in two directions. So if yes. you're in the way, then it's all over. Ah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I work also like Dr. Runyon. I work with uh, teams, and we work with NASA orbital satellite data, and we have a variety of different missions that we've worked on over the years, working on data. But this is a lot of it is data analysis. So between the two of us, we've got a lot of the. Um, a lot of the heavens covered. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I actually have a couple questions. Is that okay? Go for it. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of satellites, um, how do, how do you like see what 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 the satellite sees? Is it just like a matter of connection, or? So, there are a number of um, there are a number of orbital satellites that are in stationary orbits around the Earth. So in other words, they're always above the same spot on Earth. So as the Earth rotates, those satellites stay in place. A lot of the satellites that collect data, they orbit faster. And every time they're within sight of one of these satellites, they relay their information to the to this transmission satellite, and then it gets relayed back down to the ground. Okay. So for each one of these missions that we've talked about, the headquarters of that mission are located it's is located in a different location so some of them are located have, over the years have been located in alabama and some of them have been located in uh, at goddard space flight center and some are at jp the jet propulsion lab in california so um they, the data go to a whole bunch of different locations 
And a lot of it goes to Johnson Space Center where the astronauts are. Oh, that's awesome. I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, uh, are there any other like habitable planets known in the universe? Oh, that's a good question. So we're, so we're still working on the habitable part, but there are a number of... Um, so when I was your age, there weren't any known planets outside the solar system. And Pluto is still a planet. And then, that's right. And Pluto is still, in fact... <laughs> I wish it was. I wish it was. I went, to the grad, yeah, I went to the grad school with a guy who discovered Pluto. Oh, uh, wow. In fact, he helped create the program. So I knew him, Clyde Tomba. Wow. And... Um, uh, so when, um, yeah, when uh, in the in the nineteen nineties, um, astronomers finally developed techniques and instruments sensitive enough to start detecting planets around other uh, around other stars. Wow! Wow! Take other solar systems. You're frozen, Hacky. Did you say something no, else after stars? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, so there are uh, now four thousand planets known around other stars. And the problem is we still don't have really super sensitive instruments. So we have to kind of infer what the characteristics of the planet are from studying the star and studying the orbit. So there are a number that may be in zones where life could develop. In other words, the things that we need for that are things like liquid water and the star can't have too much um, ultraviolet or X-ray radiation. Um, I've heard that uh, there is a moon around Jupiter that is supposed to have frozen like <laughs> mountains on it. It's all water. So that's that's closer to home, and I will yes. let Dr. Runyon talk about that. Since I've that's heard that one. one. Which one? I was just trying to take a screenshot <laughs> <laughs> of all of us. So I'm, um, um, go ahead. Go ahead. So, it was you know, the so it was it was one of the moons on around Jupiter that uh, are supposed to be habitable. Or that we can oh, move God, to yeah, Europa. if needed. Europa, Europa. Yes. Um, with lots of water and ice yes, and rocky definitely. crust. Yes. Yeah. There are so, actually several of those now too. Ganymede, mm -hmm. maybe they're thinking. Um, Io is the closest one to Jupiter, and it's got active volcanoes, which are really cool because they're continuing to erupt right now. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So there's a lot of research going on in Antarctica. Uh, on here on Earth to figure out how best to study Europa and whether or not we can drill through the ice to get into the liquid water and um, to figure out what kind of experiments we need to take to see if there's actually living creatures on Europa and how to get that data back to Earth. Yeah. How long would it take to get there? Um, how long would it take to get there? To Europa? Ooh. Yes. Let's Several see. years. Yeah, six, seven years. Wow. I heard that uh from from mr bill that that uh that that uh it would take three years to to go to and back from mars yes yeah and, and mars is just awkward because it orbits at about the same speed as the earth which means that when you fire a rocket you have to time it so that it gets there you know the the, the earth is moving and mars is moving and the satellites moving and so you have to time everything. By the time you get everything to meet, it's like way over here. <laughs> and so that's, you know, halfway around is a half a year. Yes. So it takes a long time to get there. And then you have to wait until the timing is right so that you can come back. And then you have to drop it in and hit the target of the moving Earth oh, on the goodness. way back. So that's why it ends up being three years, ah. even though it's relatively close to us when it's at its closest. Yes. Um. Also, uh, well, let me ask you a question, Ellie. What are you interested in? Yeah, that's the one I Ooh. wanted to ask. Hmm. Uh, I'm more interested in in uh, constellations that are behind me. Constellations and geology. All right. And, uh, right. And, that's and, your... <laughs> yeah, right there. <laughs> uh, and and also uh, geology too. Yay! I have like a whole box of rocks in my room. <laughs> Haven't okay. gone through in a while. Well, fortunately, there's a lot of rocks on other planets, too. Yay. And probably some of the, you know, the asteroids that came in and hit us. So yeah. it can't hurt you at all to study the stars and the planets and the rocks yeah. all at the same time. Nope. Yeah. One of my friends in, uh, who I grew up with, 
when he did his PhD, he went down to Antarctica and collected meteors off the frozen ice sheets of Antarctica that had fallen on onto Antarctica, you know, million over the last millions of years, and they just didn't sink down below the ice. They sort of sat on top of it, and so he just went around and picked them up. How cool is that? That's a funny way to find pieces of other other planets yeah a good friend of mine from grad school ran the program for the united states for so long he started having children and retired because he couldn't go over christmas he wanted to spend christmas with his kids because they would go down to antarctica just after thanksgiving or sometimes before depending on the weather and then they would stay until the end of january but it's really cool that's so cool that's really cool um I have uh, another question. Have you have you been in like space mi- space missions before? We worked on them. Worked on them. Um, Haki, go first. <laughs> okay, both of us have. And oh, how cool! My experience has been with uh, uh, missions that uh, work out with gamma ray bursts, observing gamma ray bursts. So we had. Um, the heaviest payload, the heaviest civilian payload that was ever launched from the space shuttle. And it was this gigantic instrument that detected X-rays and gamma rays that was in orbit, or um, it was launched, it was supposed to go up the same time as the Hubble Space Telescope. And uh, so we collected data for that for um, over a decade. And and, uh, we worked out of Huntsville, Alabama to to collect those data and to observe the data. And like most um, NASA missions, as you get more interested in anything NASA related, all of this stuff is paid for by the taxpayer. So all of the pictures and data and information, they're all online. You can download them, you can find them, and you can you can um, use the data to do all sorts of things, but not least of which is to get pretty pictures of the planets and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I think she wants to talk. Let Cass go. She, oh, sorry. Yeah, she so, and so being a planetary geologist, I was part of um, several proposals to go back to the moon and um, actually send a rover to do some sample returns. We um, ended up being a finalist three different times. And we're never selected. However, that's been driving a lot of the research that's being done on the moon right now with a lot of the lunar samples. And I actually have some lunar samples. When the quarantine is over, I'd be happy to meet up with you and share some of them so you can actually <laughs> touch and hold rocks from the moon. <laughs> How cool is that? Uh, okay, and so, then um, I was part of another mission um, that we actually did fly a spectrometer around the moon. It was a Moon Mineralogy Mapper. It was an infrared spectrometer, well, multi-spectral, but um, we were we flew on Chandrayaan one, one of the um, India's first missions to the moon. It was successful. It actually made it there this time. Thank goodness. Um, unfortunately, for a few glitches in their design process, it did not last very long. It um, overheated because of the sun hitting it. Um, it didn't have enough solar or um, radiation protection, so it overheated and essentially fried the entire spacecraft. Oh no! Oh, that hard work. Oh no! But we did get a whole lot of data, and from that we were able to discover water on the lunar poles for the first time. That future U.S. instruments and spacecraft actually confirmed. Um, What was your next question? uh, So, so that means that that, uh, you have both been in space? Mm-hmm. Oh. In space, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they just worked on the things. They were the people. That I, um, I w- was interviewed to be an astronaut many, many, many moons ago. Many moons ago. <laughs> but I wear glasses. And at that time, they were not inter- they were taking astronauts that needed glasses. So because now they glasses are. would float. <laughs> Pardon? Because, because, because other glasses could float. Or, or like seeing problems stuff like that. They wanted perfect people in space. I think <laughs> <laughs> it was a means of weeding us all out so that they got the good candidates. Is it still like that? Is it still like that? No, um, they're actually you, there's a limit to your eyesight, but if you wear glasses for um, I I don't know what the the limit is right now, but they will accept you. Oh, okay. 
you got to be um, really gung ho to go to space now because you're yeah. probably going to be living out there for a long time. That's true. Um, my last question is: is uh, is there a way to get into like space camp? Oh, absolutely. Yes. There's a terrific space camp in Huntsville, Alabama, that all three of my children have gone to several times. And yeah, it's it's phenomenal. And your um, family can even go with you. So you can go down there by yourself. <laughs> or you can take your family. You can spend a weekend. You can spend a couple of weeks. But it's phenomenal. Awesome. Strongly recommend it. So kind of related to that. So, you know, one, one thing that Dr. Runyon and I do is we teach a a course called NASA Space Mission Design. And our students design a planetary science mission. And then they hook up with engineering students from the University of Alabama in Huntsville who are designing the rockets to take them there. And then they put the two things together to build them to design the mission. And then they have to have a mission review. And so every year, Dr. Runyon and I take our students out to Huntsville, Alabama, and they present their proposal to a panel of real NASA scientists and engineers. And then, um, so something you could be interested in somewhere down the road, but one of the things we do with our students every time we go is we make sure they get to go to the Space and Rocket Center and have fun. And we also try to take them over to NASA so that they can see the sites. Cool. And this year, because of the virus, this is about the time when we would be going. It'd be like, what, mm -hmm. next week or something, right? And we'd be leaving Friday. Friday. Oh, bummer. <laughs> yeah, it is a real bummer. <laughs> it is a real bummer. <laughs> no. so, the first year we taught the class, our students did so well. They shocked us, but they also convinced NASA that it might be a real mission. So they sent us to NASA headquarters to present it. <laughs> uh, cool is that? Um, I have another question about the space camp. Is it is it kind of like a summer camp? It can be. Um, they, they offer it year-round when it's open, so you could go down there for a weekend during the, the school year. Or, and they may close over Christmas, um, but yeah, you can, or you can go for an entire week. My kids each went for 10 days. If um, you're also interested in Air Force or Navy or being a fighter pilot or something like that, they offer Aviation Challenge at the same location as well. Wow. That's pretty cool. So you learn how to fly planes, and then you also learn survival skills on that one. So my kids went to space camp, and then they went to aviation challenge. That's awesome. Um, so my uh, so my grandparents actually live in Alabama, so I w so it won't be that far from where mm -hmm. uh, I would be at about that time, about around the summer. So probably we'll have to look in a couple that. weeks right now. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> by <laughs> by a couple of weeks, I would usually be in Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. You should go and you should convince your mom yeah. to come with you. Yes. Yep. Mom would love well, it. No. 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 I go on my own to Alabama each year. I, I, know, I know. Do you have any other questions? Uh, no? No more questions at all? No more questions. Can you say thank you for the well, happy birthday. Yeah, thank happy you. Happy birthday. Thank you. And we would love to have, you know, whenever all this is calmed down, we'd love to have you, have you come over to the campus. Um, <laughs> you know, we have... There's all sorts of great things to see. We have uh, one night a month, we have um, open observatory. So up on the, the up on the roof and you can come look at the stars. And then there's a there's a great museum over in the geology department. Which, that uh, sounds you know, awesome. <laughs> you should see. And, and if, you know, if you come over, then Dr. Runyon and I will do what we can to, you know, talk to you about whatever else we can, but. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If our class was meeting, we'd have you come talk to yeah. our class. Yeah. Yeah. They're not meeting right now. Yeah, <laughs> uh, what do you say? Thank Actually, you. Actually, you know what? Now that you know how to use Zoom, our class is presenting their mission to Venus on Tuesday of next week. It, Mom, it's from 12.15 to one thirty on Tuesday, okay. April 14th. That would be about dur uh, during lunch. Yes, we can... Uh... If uh yeah, I think we can figure that out. So okay. April the fourteenth. Well, you can help us judge their presentation, okay, Ellie? Okay. Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very strict. And what were the times on that again? It's uh, Tuesday, the fourteenth, from twelve fifteen to one thirty. Oh my gosh, that's so amazing! <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. 
So we don't know exactly how it's going to go because we've never done this before, but we'll see. Um, we're going to present, they have to present a PowerPoint presentation and every single student has to talk. So it'll be interesting. It's to going to be crazy because it's, it's a lot of students talking and I know how that goes because I'm in middle school. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, good. We'll send you the invitation. Yay! Thank you. So You're welcome. Enjoy. You're welcome. Thank Happy you all so much Your for bye. taking time out. Thank bye. you.